Hey, welcome back to Dad Life Chess. This is Joel. It is time to review game three of our Dojo Liga um, tournament that I'm in, playing in the Chess Dojo Dojo Liga Season 2. And this game was absolutely crazy. I finished it earlier this evening, and I still cannot believe what happened in this game. So if you are... Uh, if you have a habit of just watching the first few minutes, you're going to want to watch this video. It is, um, this was probably the, one of the most stressful games that I've played in a very, very long time. It was crazy. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the game. I was paired up against D Jason Unchained, and we played this game on Lee Chess, hence the little bit higher ratings. Uh, I noticed that D Jason Unchained uh, hasn't had hasn't played a ton of um, the classical games on Lee Chess with his profile, so I was trying to figure out what he would play. But going into round three, uh, we were paired up against the Kramnik Kingfishers. Both of us, the Kramnik Kingfishers and our team, the Smyslav Smooth Hounds, uh, have two points, but uh, the Kramnik team has uh, one more tiebreaker point. So that'll obviously factor in as the tournament goes on. If there's a tie, they go by the tiebreaker points. And I would try to explain what those mean, but <coughs> excuse me, I don't know what the tiebreak, how the tiebreaker points work. I think it has to do something with your the amount of games you win versus the opponents that you play and blah, 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 blah. I don't know. But anyway, there's smarter people that figure that out or a computer program. So we scheduled this game uh, for Wednesday afternoon, my time. And I didn't really do a ton of research in my opponent's games because there weren't a ton of games in the chess.com or Lee Chess Classical. And for the longest time, I, I kind of figured that they would play E4. And I thought that that was going to happen. I knew I was going to play the Kiro Khan. And in some of the games, but I think it was like the Blitz games, I was seeing this advanced variation. Now, I would have happily gone into this because I saw that the line that Jason plays wasn't the most aggressive or the most accurate play. But I wasn't realizing that these were like a long time ago, I guess. Now, really like maybe 15, 20 minutes before the game started, I was kind of perusing his uh, Lee Chess profile as we're getting ready for the game. And I noticed in the last like two or three, it must have been the Dojo Liga games, he faced the Kiro Khan and in every one he played the exchange variation. So I popped up my um, chessable course, kind of wanted to review the lines. And I realized that this guy knows his stuff. He went into the very uh, thematic and critical line. Everything was book um, going into the opening. He plays the bishop f4 line. He wants to get his bishop out. He doesn't want me to pin his knight. I move my bishop to g4. He moves his queen to b3, attacking my pawn. I bring my queen up, guarding my pawn. Um, he plays knight d2. The idea is he wants to support the knight f3. And all of this is book, and actually all of this I kind of expected. Um, I and uh, let's see, I played uh, e6. He played uh, knight g f3. I played bishop. <coughs> excuse me. I played bishop d6. I feel like I'm going to cough here in a minute. We'll see if that happens. And this is all theory. The idea is I I'm okay with this because if the queen takes this pawn, you can actually castle. You can castle here. And this is going to be a problem. Or you could play this right away. And this kind of stuff happens. You can take here. Takes. You can take the... Uh, no, I think actually, for some reason, I thought you could take this. But I guess it's the computer's just suggesting castle. And, and I guess theory states... Maybe I'll have to look at this line a little bit more. Because as I'm looking at the computer, the computer says uh, the castle. And I think if I was playing this game, I would have just taken this pawn. But the idea is um, bishop b5, and that's going to be a really difficult situation. So I have to castle first, castle first, and then if they castle, now can I take here? Or do I have to? 
I'm confused. Well, I'm officially confused about this line. I gotta go, I gotta study this line, get it, get understanding a little bit better. We did not go into that line because my opponent played the most um, principled move, castles, I castle, and my opponent plays rook a e1. I had looked at these lines literally a few minutes before the game. All of this is pretty standard stuff. Now you want to take, because you don't want to allow this knight to drop into e5. My opponent takes, and then I drop back here. My opponent plays queen c2, and now I'm officially out of book, okay? There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Um, take a drink here. So at this point, there's a lot of different options, but primarily Black's idea is a minority attack on the queen side. Mm -hmm. And white has a very clear idea of getting his knight into e5 if he can, pushing f4, lifting these rooks, bringing over here, queen coming in, you know, basically checkmating. White wants to attack the king. Uh, black wants to attack on the queen side. And right here, I end up playing, I think, the first of a couple inaccurate moves. I played rook f to c8. Now, it's not a losing move. It's not a bad move necessarily. But I looked at the, the database after the game, and I think most grandmasters are playing g6 in this position. The idea is I'm going to get this queenside expansion, but I don't, these tactics on h7 become an issue or can become an issue. And there's also a small subtle reason, and I figured this out in the game, and I've definitely learned, because when white plays this move, um, knight to e5, you want to be able to take. But if they play knight e5 and you take, and this is not guarded, They'll take with their pawn, and then the knight has to go away, and basically the knight is um, uh, the, the the pawn on h7 is going to be taken. I, and if you're if you're not following that, let me let me kind of show you an example line. Okay, so I played rook f8, rook f c8. My opponent played queen b1, and here I play the second inaccurate move, inaccurate move over. Maybe better, but here, but I think the better move is g6. And this is the reason why. I end up playing a6, and my opponent rightly plays knight to e5. Well, here's the problem if you end up taking, because right here, now you can take with this pawn, and if the knight, knight goes here, you're just gonna lose a pawn. If I drop back, then this is very much so not what you want. So the nuance by not allowing this knight to jump into e5, if I get this position again in a game, I will play g6 to start off with. There's no dark square bishops, so I'm not going to be destroyed on the dark squares. And now if they play knight e5, which is a mistake because of this beautiful tactic, if they take here, you can just drop back. Uh, let's see here. It's saying... I can actually go here, and if you go here, you have this. Yeah, that's that's pretty. Um, but if they if they take with the rook, which is more common, then this tactic is pretty it's pretty cute because they're gonna have to give up the exchange, and um, you said you're you're doing well. You're doing well. So I played a6. My opponent played knight e5. I thought, okay, that's not the end of the world. I'm gonna play g6 now to stop any of these things. I'm gonna be able to take, and then they played. Um, uh, F4. So far, he's just playing very, very well. I decided to keep expanding on the queen side. Uh, my opponent plays a3. I play rook a b8 to guard the b5 pawn. The idea is I want to push a5 and then b4. So um, my opponent, he plays rook e3. And I'm starting to get a little nervous because I'm starting to see these, these pieces being swung over at the, the king side, and I don't have that many targets, and I feel like I'm moving kind of slow. But I don't want to be distracted. I play a5, which is correct. 
my opponent plays rook h3. Now I'm thinking, okay, this might be an issue coming up soon. But I play b4, opponent takes, I take, and then my opponent plays queen e1. And now I'm, I'm really starting to get nervous because this queen's swinging over here to h4. And um, not only is she threatening h7, uh, she's threatening the king on, um, I mean, the knight on, on f6. So I take here. The idea is if they go here now, um, I think I can just take here. And that's a problem because of this. That's not easy to spot. That's not easy to spot. Um, I would see myself. Yeah, this actually might be, this would have been really annoying because I don't know if I'm going to be able to see this move or this move. The computer likes it, but I kind of took this a little bit, maybe too fast, <laughs> maybe a little bit too fast. And my opponent recaptured pretty fast. Uh, we we just thought a few seconds on those moves. And the more that I look at this, this is kind of a problem. Because if I take here, queen takes here, I can go here, queen takes, queen takes. And I have a very dangerous pass pawn, but I'm essentially down a piece. I guess I'm down a pawn necessarily, according to the material count. Not the kind of position I want. We took, uh, we ended up taking back pretty rapidly, but I saw this move. So I thought for a little while and I didn't see a good way to defend both here and here. Because let's just say I play something dumb like this. Now this move comes with a tempo. And if I try to say protect it, then oh, this is just this is just bad. F5, everything's everything's falling. Um I could go here, but this is in, insanely passive, and this is not what I wanted. So instead, after this move, I I decided on King G7. And my idea was that when they play here, I'm gonna be able to bring my Rook over or I can actually play H5 first and then I'll be able to bring my Rook over. I thought that was great. My opponent now, which the move that just like screams at me is Queen H4 and I kind of figured that they would play queen h4 and they ended up he ended up playing queen h4 but no joke my opponent thought for 40 plus minutes on this move he must have been calculating all the lines so the reason that i had with this king g7 is i wanted to be able to play pawn to h5 and when they play the very natural looking G4, I wanted to be able to take, and when they take back, to be able to take this pawn. Now, little did I know that in there, there's like just a ton of mistakes. The better way for me to play would have been in this position. Sorry, let me go back. Um, in this position, I wanted to after queen h4 if, if they if they play g4 the computer says rook h8 is a wonderful move it basically guards everything now if they play something like uh, g5 simply can drop that back and things are locked up on the king side and that's what i want i want that i have these open lines on the queen side i can start maybe getting some attack there so he's not going to do that and weirdly, the computer basically says there's like this weird perpetual that it would happen. And that's really white's best choice because if any time they don't, this is coming and then that's going to be a problem. So rook, um, rook h8 would have been the best move. 
But I ended up playing, um, when they played G4, I took here. After he took, I took here. The correct move is, yes, it's actually takes. Let me see. There was a better move. Instead of, there is a move here. Instead of G4, F5. This is a fascinating move. I'm going to force to take. The idea is take, you're on my rook, and I cannot take back because this is just, this is just ugly. So the computer is suggesting knight here, bishop takes, I get knight uh, e4 in, bishop's under attack, knight's under attack. White's, white's definitely winning, but it's something to, to play on. These are very difficult moves to find. Probably not going to find them. So my opponent plays queen h4. I play h5. We go into this line that I kind of viewed. And I, I actually thought I'm doing fine. At this point, I thought I'm doing great. So my opponent plays rook to f4. Great move. I did not see the threat. I thought to myself, okay, um, I want to, I want to be able to respond if this piece is taken i want to be able to take back with the pawn and attack the queen so i play rook h8 and that my friends is a double question mark move. um absolutely horrible move my opponent rather quickly spots the tactic and see if you can see the tactic Boom. Matter of fact, I did not just add these. Uh, well, I did add the double exclamation point. I threw this game in the uh, analysis, the chess.com analysis, and my opponent got not just one, but two brilliant moves in this game. As soon as my opponent played rook takes g4, I saw the point. Now, I had thought that this was going to be my idea, right? And thinking that now they are forced, because it's checkers, to take. It's not checkers. If I take here, that's going to be checkmate. Because this king can't go here. This king can't go here. Forced to go here. And choose your checkmate. Choose your checkmate. So the game is probably over. Well, I was disgusted with myself. I thought, how dumb is that? I decide, let's just try to trade off the queens and see if I can somehow miraculously hold on to the draw and I wanted to get rid of the firepower. Now, my opponent probably should have blocked it because he, he has a crazy attack on my king. There's no reason to give up the material or to uh, exchange down when he's he's attacking. But my opponent obliges and takes. I take back him with my rook, and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of play on to see what happens and hope my opponent makes a mistake, you know, all these kind of things. My opponent could have taken here, which was probably, wait, I didn't take, I took with the other pawn. Wait, what am I, what am I doing here? Did I take, I, I totally missed that. I missed that in the game and I missed that in my analysis afterwards. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, should have taken with the other, other rook. I wanted to keep this rook on this file, evidently. There you go, learning new things. Well, my opponent plays rook f4. They're, they're trying to get to f7. I totally missed that they could take that, uh, even just down. I play rook b2, um, and I'm trying to kind of create threats, you know, try to be do something. Got to protect f7. It's an ugly pawn. It's backwards. It's on a light square. And so he goes there. I'm like, I don't want to trade. My opponent gives me this pawn. 
So I'm like, okay, now we're down just one pawn. I know I'm still down a piece. I just got to kind of hold things together. Maybe I can draw this. So my opponent plays bishop a4, attacking my rook. And I, I kind of hallucinated. I thought if I would do some, it was going to do something like this. They were going to play here, and they were just going to win this pawn. Not realizing that I can come back and kind of hold things together. But I'm kind of like holding together, I don't know, a falling building with with uh, with uh, scotch tape or something like that. I mean, my, my building is like crumbling apart. And I'm just trying to like paste it together with like a glue stick. As soon as my opponent gets his king, you know, in the into these squares, I just feel like I'm just losing. I'm disgusted in myself. So um, I played rook e7. I wanted to stop this this bishop from coming here, even though it wasn't necessarily important or have to be, have to do. So we kind of just bounce around a little bit. I'm just trying to make some threats. My opponent is actually getting down on time. I'm kind of checked out of the game. I, to be honest with you, I'm like, well, now I got to tell my my teammates that I've uh, again lost a, a game and at least I made it past move nine, <laughs> like round one and round two is just a boring draw. And I'm just like thinking, man, this is why, why do we even play chess, right? Why do we even play chess? So um, my opponent plays Bishop B3. I thought, well, I'll trade off one Brook. That way this immediate threat is not a like a looming threat on F7 all the time. I can get my Rook moved around here and we just bounce around a little bit this my opponent plays h h4 basically locking up my pawns now if you were a sane human being and you weren't like depressed with your ability to play chess you'd probably just bounce back and forth try to you know do something just kind of bounce around try to avoid all conflict and see if you can hold it together but that's not what i do um i like to take positions that are possible to draw and completely lose them. So I'm, of course, my, my moves, I'm just basically finding one move threats. I'm like, hey, there's a pawn. I'm threatening your pawn. He's like, oh, I'm going to protect my pawn. So yeah. Did I mention that I'm having like a bad day at this, at this point? Now I start to make a king walk. Why? Because my king doesn't need to go anywhere. What am I thinking? Just keep your king right here, Joel. But no, I decide, let me just take a little walk, a little stroll, a little midnight stroll. And then I play here. Um, I believe my team captain was watching this game and um, and he was pretty disgusted in that move, as, as, as am I, as I give it a double exclamation point. What is White's plan? White's just going to infiltrate and then it's, it's lights out. It's lights out. So now he plays there, and I've kind of already resigned in my mind. I'm thinking to myself, this is, it's over, you know, there's no way. So now he's just going to get here, and he's going to attack here. So I thought to myself, I've got to maybe get some kind of activity. Plays king g7. Um, perhaps I should have played uh, king f8. That's maybe better. I just, I don't know. I was not thinking. I was not thinking. So he plays king g7, and the computer says plus five. My opponent plays rook f3, and here, the reason why I played rook a7 is I want to stop this, because let's just say I play this, okay? They go here. I have to go here to guard it, because it's, it's being attacked twice, and of course they have this check. So I'm trying to like hold it together. I want to stop this move. My opponent plays here. I drop back here. And then my opponent plays here. And I I almost clicked the resign button because I thought, oh, it's Zugzwang. I can't really move as soon as I move off of this. If I move off of this, uh, the, the seventh rank, he's going to take the pawn. If I move off of the A file, he's going to play rook A6. I mean, rook A4 check. So it's kind of like Zugzwang. And I was like, oh, wait, hold on a second. I can push my pawn and check, right? Checks are uh, checks are good. 
So he kind of blocks in here. I was kind of expect expecting him to take here. I play here because I didn't want him to take this one. That's kind of the base of my pawn chain, even though they're all going to fall. He takes here. Um, I go here. He takes here. And we just kind of, at this point, are bouncing around. I play rook a2. And I thought my opponent was just going to play this right here. And I was, I was just going to resign. He doesn't. He guards his bishop, which is smart. I play rook a3. I'm just kind of making moves, thinking, ah, uh, you know, it's going to happen. I don't want to let him in here. So I kind of stop that. And my opponent plays here. So I thought, okay, well, let's just, uh, let's just throw a Hail Mary. Let's just do one last trap. And perhaps you can see the trap. And my opponent plays here. And I was thinking, what? My whole point, my entire, my, like the entire strategy of my game right now is hinging on a trap, a one move trap. A few moves ago, this is a good move. But not now, because right here, my idea was. I'm going to skewer and win the rook. And then I kind of thought, I was like, oh, no, he can block. Well, if they block with a bishop, that even makes it worse. I'm going to win the rook. My opponent plays king f4. I take the rook. Then my play, opponent plays bishop f4. Now my heart's kind of racing. Like, I was completely checked out of this game. Like, completely checked out of the game. But now... I'm thinking, can I win? I certainly can draw. I mean, I feel like I can draw this. I think I just feel like this is like it's 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 doable, right? It's doable. But these pawns, these pawns are gonna be hard to get at. So I play here, right? He protects the pawn. I come back over here and he plays here. So I come back here. He goes here. And probably if I wasn't crazy, I would have just taken the draw. This kind of stuff, okay? There's not much. Black's doing better. I mean, Magnus Carlsen would probably win this as black, or Stockfish would win this as black, but I went from, I'm completely losing this game. My, 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 the mouse is like hovering over the resign button, completely checked out. I'm like not, I'm like disengaged, and now I'm like, now I'm thinking, what's happening? This is, this is, this is, this might have, there might be something here. So I end up playing rook to a2. I thought, well, maybe I can, maybe I can trick him. Maybe I can lull him into sleep. So I went back here. And now this was a, a mistake because my opponent can play king g5. And right here, my only moves are rook here or rook here and this is a draw but i'm counting the squares i'm like one two three no you can't get there i'm gonna win that pawn so i'm thinking this is i think i'm gonna win this game my opponent plays here and i take the pawn My, the next move by my opponent freaked me out. Now, technically, it's still a draw. But my opponent played bishop takes e6, double exclamation point. And I was thinking, what has just happened? I'm going to lose this game. Because if I take this bishop, this is there's no way to stop this. I can't get over nothing. I saw that move and I thought to myself, what? I in a way I was like, did he just did I did I just it was like a roller coaster of emotions. At first I'm like, did I win? Because I can win, I can get that pawn, right? And I was like, I can't get that pawn. Now I'm freaking out. I have to move here. 
I've got to be able to stay in this box. I got to stay in this box. The principle of promoting a pawn, if you make a diagonal arrow to the edge of the board and build a box, if you can, on your move as the defender, get into that box, you can stop the pawn. If I go here, that pawn's a rolling. Okay, I can't get back in that box. This box is now really small. Sorry for all the arrows and dots and squares. So I have to go down. Now, it's a draw. So I thought, no problem. It's a draw. But my opponent plays king f6. I was expecting king to g6, which I thought was probably better. But I get here. Felt like this kind of move here, or I could go even here, maybe. It just, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. Instead, my opponent plays, um, uh, my opponent plays uh, king to f6. And I thought, okay, now, now it's a draw. Now it's a draw. I'm going to be able to stop this and we get this pawn. You know, I'm going to be able to get my king here. And my opponent goes there. It's like, no problem. Got to stay on the dark squares. And uh, my opponent takes here. So I, I kind of thought to myself, all right, now I am 100% sure that I can draw this. Because as long as I can get this king over to this square, either one of these squares, Okay, it's a draw because white has a light squared bishop. And if you know the end game principle, if black, if white has a pawn on the H file and they have a uh, light squared bishop, they'll never be able to promote that pawn if black can get to the edge of the board. They can basically just go back and forth or it's going to be a stalemate. So I said, worst case scenario, I will sacrifice this rook any day, all day long for that pawn. No problem. I play king e7. My king, he plays here. And I go rook h3. My idea is I want to be able to check on the, um, the g file. My opponent plays uh, h7. Okay, so now I'm thinking, okay, got to get over, got to get over to here, got to get to that pawn, get my king here. No problem. King f8. This move is losing. There is a crazy tactic. Now let me go back. When I moved my king to... When I move my king over to e7, thinking that I need to guard or stop this, I honestly, it, it's still a draw, but I'm pretty sure I can just bounce back with my king and any time they go here, I can just take, okay? And if they push like something like this, then I can get here and then I'm, and then it's, then once they, once they allow me in, but once I went over this way, not paying too much attention, that little bit of an inaccuracy um, allowed for this right here. This is losing. Fascinating tactic. Bishop to G2 exclamation point. Let's give that an exclamation point. What's the idea? This does not work because King just steps away and there is no more checks and there's no way to stop this. And that actually comes with checkmate. <laughs> so I could take here and uh, actually not quite checkmate, but uh, soon enough. I think you can even, actually that's, that's cute. You can just take there and then here. <laughs> know your end games. Um, Bishop G2 would have been awesome. Then you're forced to go here. Bishop F3. You're going to be able to block the rook from attacking the, the pawn, and this pawn is going to promote. Thankfully for me, my opponent did not see that. There's actually quite a few moves. I thought that this was the coolest one. Uh, you can actually win 
the same way with bishop e6, and you're going to be able to get this kind of idea. But this is the most clean way, bishop g2. My opponent, though, plays bishop to e4, which is still technically winning. But once they go here and here and allow me in here, it's a draw. So I'm breathing a sigh of relief. Now, thankfully, because I would have been having like a heart attack, I did not know that this is like completely losing until he goes to uh, the E6 square. I think he thought that his best chance was to be able to promote this pawn. I bring my king here. And now I basically, I'm able to get up out of my chair. I'm kind of walking around my office. I'm thinking we're just going to find a way to, if he moves, if he just moves this bishop anywhere, I'm just going to take the pawn. And uh, so we kind of bounce around. He plays king e6, I play here, and uh, he plays king here. And I thought to myself, okay, that's cute. I'm going to take here, and then you're going to be able to run this pawn. So I took it. I didn't even calculate. I didn't calculate. Um, and uh, he plays here. I go here. He goes here. And I stop to think, wait a second. He's got to move his king to protect that pawn to promote. He's one tempo down. And that pawn's gone. You can promote to be a queen, but that's game over. And right here, my opponent resigned. Now, I want to remind you of what happened in this game. I misplayed the opening, made some inaccuracies. My opponent had a great attack. We're going to go back a little bit. So we get a standard exchange, Karo Khan. My opponent attacks really well on the king side. I misplay it. I get this horrible move right here. Right here is horrible move. My opponent wins a piece. I try to kind of go back and forth, finagle a little bit. We're down, uh, dancing around. I'm ready to resign. My opponent allows for this pretty obvious tactic that I thought I was seeing. he sees that. So now I'm kind of sort of winning. Looks like it's going to be a draw. Maybe we should fight for more. And now I'm almost losing. I'm a technically lost. And now it's a draw. Okay. All is good. No problem. No more worries whatsoever. And now I'm winning. That game was such an emotional roller coaster. I cannot describe to you. I still, I finished this game a few hours ago and quite honestly, like I'm still in shock. I did not deserve to win that game. I should have lost that game at least five times. And yet, somehow, some way, we got a little bit lucky. Who said there's no such thing as luck in chess? That was a roller coaster. That was crazy. And that's why chess is quite, quite exciting. My uh, uh, team captain said that once I allowed the king to infiltrate, he kind of turned off the game. He's like, I can't watch it. I can't watch it. This is going downhill. I don't think I've ever had a swindle like that in my life. I've been on the other side. I've been on the losing side of games like this, and I know how it feels. But I don't think I've ever been on the winning side of a game like this with that much at stake uh, in our tournament round at stake so hey what can you say it was a fun game for parts of it and uh quite a roller coaster hope you enjoyed the recap video let me know in the comments below please do subscribe we will catch you next time
on Dad Life Chats. Bye.